1969, an obscure American soul group recorded a short drum solo. Amen Brother was the B-side of a minor hit by the Winstons. From humble B-side beginnings, the drum solo went on to become the backbone of more than three decades of popular music. Generations of artists have sampled the track, but the original group never saw a penny. I'd like to talk about drums, or rather, about a particular drum beat. I'm sure you've heard it dozens of times before. My name is Nate Harrison, and I produced a mini documentary of sorts about the rise and subsequent uh, proliferation of this Amen Break drum beat. My name's Steve Seabold. I'm the joint organizer of the Aim and Break campaign. The Amen Break is a drum solo, if you will, that occurs in the middle of a song called Amen Brother, which was an instrumental kind of soul gospel R&B track from 1969. And then halfway through the song... this kind of syncopated, funky rhythm right in the middle, perfectly ripe for sampling. And then you can sort of replay them as if they were your own drums, and so voila. It's just that one loop which, incredibly, whole musical genres and scenes have literally been built on. TV adverts. Been used in films. Anywhere from Goldie, Square Pusher, to Trent Reznor, to Dr. Dre. The Prodigy, house music, hip hop, R and B. You could argue that the jungle scene and the drum and bass scene have been built on it. Oasis have used it. David Bowie's used it. It's in the theme tune to Future Armor. Thousands and thousands and thousands of tracks. But I don't think there's been any break beat that's been edited more. You know, it's really the backbone of so much music, and it makes, you know, hip-hop, as an example, makes a lot of money. Drum and bass music made a lot of money. But nobody's, nobody's ever seen any royalties or recompense for that. The Winstons split up in about 1970. They kind of fell off the radar. G.C. Coleman, the drummer, unfortunately passed away some years ago. I'm not sure whether he actually knew the impact of what the Winstons as a, as a group had created. The initial impact of the campaign was incredible. It's, it's a real showing of support for Richard Spencer, who is the surviving member of the Winstons. He and I gladly got involved because it's something I'm very passionate about. I think it's great. When I saw it, I kind of kicked myself for not thinking of the same idea. I think it's really great. You know, we're over £16,000, which equates to about US dollars As much as that's awesome, I think it's super awesome. That's really pennies compared to, again, how much the track has been used. But it's not about that. It was all just about giving something back to a 72-year-old guy in America with heart problems that has never really seen a penny other than his royalties that he got in the original release. We're going to ensure that Richard receives at least a token gesture. So we're going to leave it open. We're going to see how far it can go. I'm really pleased with how we're doing this and the way it's gone. That's brilliant. Who would know what almost sounds like a jam session? What impact that's going to have on modern music and modern culture? And the fact that some guy just hammered it out in six seconds, you know? That report compiled by Robin Warren. The news and then the election desk in 35...